Hello, beautiful people. This game show is happening in Korea. It's going to be sick. Look out for it. I can't say anything else about it. I guarantee it's going to be sick. So in regards to this Robbie situation, I've been hanging out with high stakes professional poker players and we've been accumulating some knowledge. We've been talking about it. It's all the gossip that the poker drama, the poker world just love to be talking about. And the high stakes community is no exception. So it seems. So um, there's a lot of other people in Korea. If you've seen my social media, you'll see who some of them are. You'll see other, otherwise uh, on other people's social media. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say because there's so much discretion when it comes to the show, but it's, it, it's publicly out there anyway, so whatever. I just want to say that it is really frustrating for a lot of these players and me included to see the poker community kind of just like going in, in waves and waves and waves about whether Robbie cheated or whether she didn't. And so many of the players that I'm speaking to, and these are like top tier players, are like 99% plus sure that it happens. And then you look on Twitter and most people are like, ah, who fucking knows? And I, I think the difference is that a lot of these players have been cheated themselves. A lot of these players understand the mechanisms of how it works. And they also just have a good grasp of probabilistic thinking because that is what they've made millions of dollars doing. So I just really wanted to hammer home something that I've been speaking a little, a little bit about. I've been flirting with the topic. And let's just get this straight. She cheated. If you disagree, whatever, I don't care. But share your opinion, I don't, I don't mind. But she cheated, in my opinion, is near 100%. How did it happen? Now... If she was told that she has the best hand or that she's going to win the hand, that leaves two potential outcomes. If you look at the, the tree, that's either that there's been some kind of electronic signal device to her, you know, the fucking yoga pants scrunched up and things like that. Could be her hip, who knows, probably is. Can't imagine you use a fucking big device that buzzes. Or they have some kind of signaling method where somebody else, either the dealer or somebody else at the table, has a device, maybe a smaller device, <laughs> what people were suggesting, uh, maybe a contact lens or something like that. I, I've actually been personally cheated where I'm pretty sure they're using contact lenses that worked with the RFID in a certain way to let them know when, when they were going to win the hand or lose the hand. Uh, I lost like 200k plus in that game and I've been speaking to, to somebody here who's lost... Uh, maybe like triple that at least in, in these kind of games with various different cheating devices. In my opinion, it is way more likely, way more likely that they have some kind of signaling method to Robbie and she isn't the one getting the direct, the direct message. And here's my argument. When I've looked at the footage, there have been too many anomalies. If, if I saw it by themselves and there wasn't like a jack for hands, I'd, I wouldn't be so suspicious. But, by, but with the jack four hand happening simultaneously, it's just fucking crazy. Now, first of all, there's a guy called Eric Pearson, and I know that people think that he's way too rich to cheat, but I guarantee if you think that that's how people think, if that's how cheaters think, you do not understand the world. If you look at the richest people in the world, goddamn, they're cheating you every day. They're, they're, they're turning the... They're cheating in the stock market, they're che cheating in, in so many different ways, and che cheating financially in so many different ways. It's how they got rich, and it's part of who they are, it's part of their essence. So I'm not directly accusing Eric, but hear me out on this. When have you ever seen anyone sit like this? Ever. It was like this. Very rarely. Now, if he was just randomly sitting like that, I'd be like, hey, dude, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Don't, don't think of anything, don't think anything of it. The two times it happens, the two times it happens is one, Jack forehands just as it's beginning. Two, when Garrett has Jack Fiver clubs and Rip, who's obviously very likely the other accomplice in this, has top pair, top kicker, and it just goes Rip bets and Garrett folds. Again, right at the beginning of the hand, when Rip has a better hand than Garrett, right at the beginning of the hand, where Robbie has a better hand than Garrett, like this and like this. Now, another thing, and I, I really don't want to Im implicate somebody who's innocent, so again, don't just go after somebody, but I posted something on my Twitter being like, this is really suspicious, and it was a, a, a video of the, the dealer called Lauren. Uh, she is signaling as well in the exact same way. She's holding her cards. Robbie does this and says, I'm scratching my face because that's the shit I got, which is, again, another one, one finger scratch. She's been doing that a lot when she has a weak hand. So I think that's also part of the signaling thing. Again, you can't be sure about these things, but I've seen too many videos of her doing it again when she's got a weak hand. That would be my guess. A very, very strong guess, in fact. So Robbie does this. 
I'm scratching my face because that's the shit I got. She's sitting there with fucking Jack Hype being like, Are you guys sure? <laughs> yeah. I know this is, uh, this is meant to be the hand, but you're sure? I've got fucking terrible hands. And then as soon as she says that, the dealer goes like this. She, sorry, the dealer's on the car. She goes like this, two fingers out like this. Let me see if I can get it like that. Does it for about five seconds and puts it back. Now, I heard the counter argument that that is her counting the uh, time extension chips. And I was like, that actually seems like a really reasonable thing. So I looked through a bunch of the videos and I asked other people too as well, and I haven't seen a single other time that she does it. Now, secondly, how long after Garrett's clock starts would you expect two to come out? If you had to guess, just guess before I tell you how long it actually was. Take, take a few seconds and see what you would have done in the, what, what you would have done in this spot. <laughs> exactly, a minute long. You would expect, I think it's 30 seconds each, right? So you'd expect it to be a minute long. Now, in fact, this signal happens 25 seconds after Garrett's clock starts. Now, how on earth, pray tell, is that gonna be anything to do with time extension chips? Because it's not even hit the first time extension, never mind the second one. So to me, that's, that, that, that just completely throws that, that counter argument out of the water. It's obviously nothing to do with time extensions. So what is it? Is it a twitch? Well, fucking probably not, because that, that doesn't seem like an end. And when everything is very unlikely, when the fact that, you know, the deal is in on it is very unlikely, and the fact that, you know, it's a time extension is obviously extremely unlikely, and the fact that it's a twitch is very unlikely, suddenly you have to choose one unlikely scenario. It's, it's, it's how probabilities work. If, if there are like six different possibilities and all of them seem extraordinarily unlikely, relative to the 100% total capacity of probabil probabilistic thinking, you have to put one of them above each other by comparing them to one another. So, again, not implicating the dealer, not implicating Eric, but please somebody give me a rational argument that isn't just like, he's too rich to cheat or this fucking, like it's time extension things. Please find one example of where he's sitting like this in a spot where his friend or somebody that's implicated in this cheating scandal hasn't got a, a good hand and hasn't got a winning hand against, against Garrett or somebody else at the table. Find one example and all of this evidence is just thrown out the water. Find one example of him just sitting there just fucking chilling with his wife or whatever it is. Find one example of, of the dealer doing this just randomly in a thing. and. I think it's clear. I think this evidence is completely a nothing bugger. I think it's complete bollocks. But please, for the love of God, don't just fucking discard it out the way just because it seems very unlikely. If you don't know how cheaters work, they work very fucking well. They work very fucking subtly. They've had a long time to prepare the people looking at how cheaters work, the people trying to, the people who are being cheated, they don't know how cheating works, so they can't prepare for this. They don't know what to look for. So please don't be blind to it. And for the, love of Christ, for the love of Christ, please don't just look at Robbie speaking now and think that her being confident, her being articulate, her being charismatic is, is any kind of proof that, that shows that she's innocent and you then should then like disregard the other like hundred things that point towards her being guilty because that's just not how things work. You can't just pay attention to somebody that's shown to be a pathological liar and assume that because they seem convincing when they're talking, that means that they're suddenly innocent. That's just not how we should be looking at this as a community. I will say, again, you got, you got to still be very compassionate. You've got to still be very kind. If somebody has a different opinion to you, like if I have a different opinion to you, if another pro has a different opinion to you, if Robbie has a different opinion, you have to just be kind. You have to be open. You have to be humble. Like, I might be wrong. I might be wrong about all of this. I might just be connecting dots that aren't there, but I just need to see the argument for it. And that's why we need to be promoting a kind of environment where we're not directly and aggressively accusing people, but saying, hey, this is my argument. These are my thoughts. Let's throw them all in the middle, have, a, have an intellectual discussion about it, have a fair and compassionate or at least dispassionate discussion about it and not just fucking go crazy accusing one side of being too naive or one side of being too conspiratorial or whatever it is. Let's try and be intelligent about this because we know that there's tons of cheating happening in cash games. I know loads of people that got cheated, including myself, for much more money than this. So let's have intelligent conversations about it. Let's just put aside all the bullshittery, put aside all the tribalism. If you find yourself getting angry at people who disagree with you, take some time away from the situation. Meditate on it, think about it, go for a fucking walk, do whatever it is that you do to feel good. Fucking go watch your porn or whatever you wanna do, you beautiful little freaks. I love you, whatever you have to do. 
but just don't get angry when people disagree with you because it's just not worth it. It's just not how we come to good conclusions. It's not how you create a good environment. It's not how you create a good world. So please think about this. Please, if you have some time on your hands, and I know a lot of you do, um, go look through the other footage. My DMs are open. If you feel like there's some counter examples, some counter evidence of somebody sitting like this, of the dealer doing this, I will be very open about it. I'll be so open to listening. I want to be wrong on this one because you know, I, I really don't want to be implicating somebody that, that isn't, 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 uh, isn't guilty. Uh, so <sighs> think about it. Let's think about it. Let's be intelligent. Let's not just throw caution to the wind, take a side and then double down and double down and double down. Let's really try and analyze what's happening. There's way too many anomalies to just completely shove out the way and, and tidy under the rug. There's way too many coincidences that are all pointing towards one direction. There are way too many weirdnesses happening. And yeah, when, when, when people who are at the top of the poker world are directly saying that they're above 99% certain, perhaps if you're sitting there and you're like, no, she definitely didn't cheat, perhaps just like think about it. Perhaps just like really consider maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not quite thinking about it. And obviously if you're way 100% certain that she, she did cheat, perhaps think about thinking like why you could be wrong as well, or if you have a, a different hypothesis or theory that branches out from this, please always try to consider why you might be wrong. And I'll do the best that I can as well. Beautiful people. Let's also remember not to get too sucked into this, not to spend too much time thinking about it. Um, it's important to have the conversations. It's important to put forward uh, data. It's, it's important to put forward evidence, but if you're spending every hour of every day thinking about it, if it makes you feel bad, if it, if it tilts the crap out of you, take some time away, do some other stuff, put your feet in some grass, spend some time with family and look after your mental health because it, it, it is a very heavy situation. And if you spend all of your waking hours feeling heavy, then you're going to have a pretty shitty existence. So please look after yourselves, you beautiful creatures. I love you. Peace.